Awesome. Who says the Leafs home arena is quiet? That was in Ottawa. I know what I said. Let's go! Ladies and gentlemen, a little ridiculous. Good boy. Play all the hits! Let's Toronto Maple Leafs. Let me finish. How much more go to bed after watching that? I'm quite hyped. With you wherever you are, welcome to LFR. Ziggy, bark if you think Connor Brown's goal should have counted. Yeah, I didn't think so either. I didn't think so either. Oh, Leafs win! 5-4 in overtime over the Ottawa Senators. It was the best of times, it was the blurst of times, and Mark Giordano ends it with a snipe off a wicked feed from Willie. We're gonna mostly talk about the game in chronological order, but there's something I wanna get out of the way right away. The Tim Stutzla, William Nylander penalty. So, Stutzla bumps into William Nylander in the neutral zone, and they get tangled up, and William Nylander gets called for the interference call and he looks to the heavens now on the stream in real time i looked at this and said willie you gotta stop because he took the penalty and he looked so casual and cavalier about it and what i said is you gotta stop you gotta stop letting the people who don't like you be right everything they say about your attitude about your work ethic come on and i gotta first and foremost apologize to william nealer because then they showed the replay and i went oh the one thing that my mentions made clear is me and sense fans seem to agree that this is not a penalty we don't agree on the reason why but it's not a penalty not even close. I thought this was clearly embellishment from Tim Stutzla, but I made two mistakes. One, I said Brendan Gallagher was right, and two, I tweeted that. I could have just left that bad thought in my head, but I, then I sent it out into the world. The Sens fans were quick to point out, uh, Tim Stutzla actually missed two games after that little rant from Brendan Gallagher, and you know what? You're right, and I forgot that. I'm wrong for that. Hands up. I'm wrong for that. Okay, now that I've admitted some wrong, Tim Stutzla was just going for a line change? Guys, neither of us is that dumb. Stop it. Stop. That's how you line change? That's how? I think I'll just go on the four check and what's that? You want me to line change? Okay. Let me just line change real quick. Let me just line change real quick. Let me just line change real quick. It's embellishment. It's absolutely embellishment. It's accidentally on purpose embellishment. Some people said it wasn't embellishment. It was just a bad call. Okay, fine. Like, I'll, I, I disagree, but I'll meet you there. Let me just say this. The game is over now, and I for sure don't care. I know you probably think I'm lying, but I stopped caring at, like, first intermission, dude. And this happened about 90 seconds before, and the Leafs were down 2 nothing. They went to intermission, and I didn't care. And my mentions were an inferno. I was amazed to learn the list of things that I supposedly am. I can't believe I'm the one saying this, but relax. I think he embellished a bit. I super don't care. Let's move on. And one other little bit of housekeeping before we move on. This was gonna be in the question section, but it makes sense off the top. Why are Leafs fans so disrespectful during a moment of silence? Yeah, dude, I've been at Leaf games with a moment of silence, and it's silent. And then there's a, <coughs> like, the unnecessary, like, cough into your sleep. And then, after a few moments, go Leafs! Shut up! By the way, shut up guy is not helping. I understand it, but you're not helping. It's dumb. It's dumb. It's dumb every time it happens. Every person who does it, every fan base who does it. Anyone who's ever done that during a moment of silence ever is dumb. At the very least, they're doing a dumb thing. But can you do me a favor? Just do me a favor. Don't generalize. Yes, it's Leaf fans. It's only Leaf fans who do this. You're right. Can you stop? Now, good lord, can we talk about the game? I like to talk about the game now, if that's cool with everybody. Now. How did this game start? For the first 14 minutes, the Leafs dominated the Ottawa Senators. So naturally, who allowed the first goal? That's right, the Leafs. On a play where Kerfoot could have shot it, Hall could have shot it, Brody definitely should have shot it, and then it ended up being a 2-0 for the Ottawa Senators, in which the aforementioned Tim Stutzla scores. Because of course he did, it was a 2-0! I believe the shots were 13-4 when this went in, and the Leafs now find themselves losing. Anton Forsberg, doing very well, Eric Shilgren, also doing well, he just plays behind the Leafs. And I want you to keep this in mind as a theme for this evening, because Forsberg faced way more shots than Shelgren, meaning Forsberg was the better goalie by far, right? Because at this point in the game, Shelgren had a save percentage of 75! Except, well, 
No one in their right mind would blame that on Shelgren. That, that was a 2 on 0. Mm, you're going to want to keep that in there for later. That's that's going to come up a few times. Well, not that much later, actually. Only about a minute later. Because the Sens scored in their fourth shot, and they said, that's good, we should keep that going. And then they scored on number five! Michael Delzato with a blast for the point. During the stream, I actually thought this one ended up going off of Brady Kachuk. Turns out it didn't. Kachuk is able to move Lilligren out of the way. He's a big boy, and if you could blame Shelgren for anything, it's doing the mirror cat. Remember Reimer with the meerkat? We don't like the meerkat. This thing, I believe it went off of Lilligren as well. So now, Shelgren has given up two goals on five shots. Do you blame him for either? But Steve, the Leafs have gotten more shots and more chances than the Sens. Yes, yes. But were any of those chances a 2 on 0? Well, no. And this one went off a leaf. And this one, by the looks of it, went off a leaf. Not all chances are created equal, and therefore not all save percentages are created equal. Early in the second period, though, the fourth line, there's lots of auditions going on there. And just as this shift was going on, on the stream, I was getting ready to say this line doesn't have a thing. The great thing about the fourth line in the Capitals game against Tom Wilson and co is that line very had a thing. It was Colin Blackwell in the middle flanked by Kyle Clifford and Wayne Simmons. Two big dudes with big fists, you know what to expect every time they're gonna get on the ice. I was watching the Leafs fourth line in this one in the first period and they were okay, they didn't really get hemmed in, they tried to generate offense, but they were just sort of the fourth best line and I feel like that's not good enough for the fourth line. The fourth line's job is not to be the fourth best line. It's not even to just go out there and don't make any mistakes. You gotta have a thing. That's why a lot of grinders end up on the fourth line because at least it's a thing. You try to have an offensive fourth line, but any good coach can match that well enough in the playoffs and you should hopefully have good enough depth in the playoffs, especially if you're on at, at, at home. You gotta have a thing. What's their thing? And Clifford goes, well, I'm big. That's kind of my thing. Oh, well, are you going to fight someone? No, I wasn't thinking that. Are well, you going to throw a big hit? Maybe, but not right now. Well, what are you going to do? Well, I was kind of thinking I'm bigger than everyone else, so what if I just stand in front of the net and don't move? You know, it's alarming how often that works. You should try it. I will. And then he did. And he scored! Mark Giordano holds the puck at the blue line, gives it over to Justin Hall. Justin Hall puts it on. Tip by Kyle Clifford. Perfect! tip by Kyle Clifford, and the Leafs are on the board. And Kyle Clifford is on the board with his first goal as a Leaf! Again! You see, because he had one goal in 16 games with the Leafs the first time he was a Leaf, then he went to St. Louis for a little while, came back, this is his first goal since coming back. It's a really good one too, like he tips it perfectly, like ba basically right off the bar. Kyle Joe Pavelski Clifford. Now that's the Leafs getting better on the offensive side of the puck, what about on the defensive side? Surely they're making Eric Shelgren's job easier. Are they puck? Sens put a shot on from the point that is tipped by Dylan Gambrell. Now, there was, there was a sign before the shot even left the stick that there was going to be a problem. Because the Sens, before the game, found out that Colin White actually wasn't going to be able to play. Replacing him in the lineup, apparently, is Elmer Fudd! Be very, very quiet. I'm playing in a National Hockey League game! This is going to be a blurry screenshot because it's an action cam, but I, I like this angle because it shows how bad the Leafs are in front. Here's the Leafs shut down center and number one defenseman completely losing one and arguably two guys right in front of the net. Again, I ask you, what is Shelgren supposed to do? Now it's 3-1. Luckily, rather than letting it fester, the Leafs get on the board again about a minute later. Because Bunting forgot how to score for a while, then Super remembered, and he remembered again in this one. But still, he sought some advice from Kyle Clifford. He said, Kyle, how did you score your goal? And he said, I went to the net. But Bunting was on the other side of the bench and he didn't quite hear him. And he said, go in the net? Cool. You can't go to the net much more than this. This goal, would have absolutely not counted in 1999. 1999 sucked though, but th this goal would not have counted in the uh, year that sucked. But it counted in this one, and that's all that mattered. The Leafs are now within one. And seven minutes later, with about 90 seconds to go in the second, the top line takes over. Marner doing whatever he wants with the puck. TJ Brody coming up with it. He bobbles it, but he gets control of it, drops it for Mitch Marner for the blast. His 32nd of the season. This dude is a weapon with that shot now. What a bomb. What a clapper on Mitch Marner. Not something I, I even before this season, just before this season, I would have never thought. People talk about his shot. Marner's always had a good shot. He just wasn't as willing to use it. It's his bomb. It's his slap shot. It's so good now. It's lethal. So the Leafs head into the third time. In the third, I'm going to remind you again about that little Eric Sheldon stat, because Ilya Labushkin 
is a really good addition to the Toronto Maple Leafs. He really is on the back end. He actually moves bodies. And we also know in terms of right-handed defensemen, he is only behind Shea Weber in terms of shot power, apparently, according to last game. But hey, do you want to see the worst thing Ilya Labushkin's done in a Leaf uniform? Here it is. Here it is. Here it is. And also, here's a Leaf fan in the front row standing up. Please stop doing that. I hate when people do that. And also, Sparta Cat in the corner. Do you want to see how it went? Here. Here's how it went. And this was the result. It was a rather poor result, if, if you ask me. Perhaps not Tim Stutzla, but if you ask me. Again, I ask you, what is Shelgren to do? Now, if those pile up over time, yeah, you'd like a save. You'd like a, a, an occasional save. You know what? Bail us out every now and then. Well, first of all, Shelgren would do that later in the game, but also, come on! The 2 on 0, the Delzato goal is probably the most forgivable one. The Gambrell one isn't. And then this one is Labushkin making like the worst defensive gaff he's ever made. Luckily, at the halfway mark of the third period, the Leafs tie it, and here's how I know they weren't even trying. It's a play that looks like a try hard play. Michael Bunting throws it in front to Mitch Marner, who's crashing the net, and it goes off of Mitch Marner, and in they tie it up this was the celebration this 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 look at this goof look at his look at his silly hands look at his tongue look at his goofy tongue he tied the game in the third period against a divisional rival in a game where the leaf fans packed the house and his celebration was to go ah, ah, ah. do you remember game three against the washington capitals in 2017 remember the leafs came back from down 3-1 just like they did in this game tyler bozak won that game in overtime just just like the leafs did in this game i don't remember him celebrating by going ah i can guarantee you no playoff goal the leafs score this year will be met with ah I hope one of the Leafs sees this and that's the first thing they do. I don't think it will be, but now that the words leave my mouth, I want it with all my heart. But that was the moment right there where I'm like, ah, they're not trying. Now, the game would go to overtime. The Leafs would abandon Eric Shelgren again. Tim Stutzla had the puck on his stick, the game on his stick, and it would have given him a hat trick. And all I could think was, my mentions are about to be bad. But luckily he was stopped, Connor Brown shovels it in, but the goal is called back. You, you, Sens fans are gonna be shocked. I think it was the right call. Listen, it's a goal if the puck is loose. And there was an argument for that because Shelgren's pad sorta lifts up. Stutzla puts the puck under his pad, his pad elevates just a little bit, and Brown shovels it in. Now, if he found a way to, like, Jenga it, if he found a way to, like, get his stick a little bit more flat, and he gets just the puck and none of Shelgren's pad, absolutely, call it a goal. But that's not what happened. The puck was under Shelgren's pad, and Brown moves Shelgren pretty significantly. You can't do that. So, ref at center ice, no goal. Home fans go wild, and overtime continues. Now, you'll remember on a recent episode of the Steve Dangle Podcast, we talked about how three-on-three three is silly, dumb, fun time. So much so that playing the role of Eric Carlson tonight is William Nylander fires a rocket up the ice to Mark Giordano, who's the, the sniper on the wing, I get Apparently he is! Absolutely fires a laser beam past Anton Forsberg, and in the hometown boy... Get a look at the hometown boy. Here comes the boy. Hello, former captain of the Calgary Flames for a long time. I'm still getting used to it. Welcome. Underrated part of this picture. Look at this. Just a couple captains. Just a couple captains chilling. And celebrating at the same time. Look at that. Man, that game was dumb. But they won. And that's a lot of fun. Tomorrow they play the Islanders. Questions. What's Forsberg's least favorite subject in school? Geography. I'll see myself out. Inform the council. Get this man a finest pair of white New Balance shoes and a finest pair of calf high socks. He's invited to the dad barbecue. He can come. Shout out Vantalog. Do the Sens make the playoffs next year? So. The Sens are a rebuilding team, and they have something figured out that a lot of rebuilding teams don't. They're goalie. Yes, the uh, uh, Matt Murray contract is a problem, but they have a starting goalie. Anton Forsberg is it, and they locked him up. They also got some young pieces. Tim Stutzla is already there. Josh Norris is extraordinarily underrated. Thomas Shabbat wasn't even playing in this game, etc., etc. Here is the biggest obstacle in the Sens' way in terms of making the playoffs. The Bruins, 
Are they getting worse? The Leafs? Are they getting worse? The Panthers? Are they getting worse? The Lightning? Are they getting worse? And by how much? The Red Wings? Are they getting worse? They're not very good, but are they getting worse? And then who else? Oh, the Habs. Are they going to be worse next year than they were this year? Right? It's such a wild division. That's the biggest obstacle in the Sens' way. Uh, they can continue to do the right things and, and sell off guys and stockpile assets and try to draft well. That's still going to be an obstacle in their way. It's really hard to say. Talk about the Raptors? <laughs> Not after that one, buddy. It's been three games. I don't know about 70 goals anymore, but 69 do be looking nice. Matthews has been struggling enough that I think it's about time we ask, should he be replaced with Colin Blackwell? You know what's hilarious is Matthews has actually looked pretty good. It's just we're used to him scoring at such a ridiculous clip that when he doesn't score for three games, we think the earth has stopped rotating. They got the Islanders tomorrow and they got the Flyers in a few days. I'll be interested to see how this goes. So that is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you like this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends he was going for a line change. I'm kidding. Relax. Tell all your friends, relax.